opportunities. All right, we are on air. Good Lord. All right, <laughs> karibu sana. The hashtag is why in the morning, and my good name is Brian Sankwe. And as always, interact with us and let us know where you're watching us from. And once again, we've posted a question there, letting you know that who is your favorite entrepreneur that you'd like to be interviewed right here on the show? I definitely like to hear another comment from you as we uh, navigate through this conversation. And uh, live in studio with us, we have a very powerful guest who's going to take us through the journey of travelpreneurship. If, if you have no idea what that is, it's going to paint for us a panoramic view. He is uh, Philip Hamad. He is the CEO of Milestone Tours and Travel. Karibu sana, Philip, even though we got you off guard. <laughs> All right, so uh, maybe if you were to tell us a little bit uh, story about your journey, before you even settled on uh, coming up with this powerful foundation, the CEO of Milestone Tours and Travel. You're the CEO, yes, but uh, before you became the CEO, maybe what were you doing previously? Mm, so I'm, a, I'm an engineer by profession. Right. <coughs> but uh, I, from since I was a little kid, yeah. I, have been, I have been into traveling. Right. So I think uh, last year, it was a day that I was just sitting around with my friends. Yeah. Uh, we had gone to Mombasa. Yeah. So we, we usually travel a lot. Yeah. So that day we were sitting with my friends and then we, we just asked ourselves, we travel a lot yeah. and why don't we use this opportunity to make also others feel like they want to explore the country. Mm -hmm. See? Yeah. So the moment we came from Mombasa, we came back to Nairobi. Right. We had a meeting, consulted with our friends. Right. We decided to do the paperwork right. from the company. Yeah. I think that's how we started. Yeah, so, it, so it's already a registered tours and travel yeah, company. Yeah, it's a registered company. Everything yeah. is intact. Right. Yeah. Uh, the name, th 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 does the name also mean something? Yeah. Uh, milestones, uh, the meaning of milestones is like a, we can say like a big step. Mm. See, yeah. so uh, if we use the, we decided to use the name milestones because we, we, we were looking at ourselves like we want to come to the industry and make a very big change to the industry. Right. So that's why we decided to call it milestones. Yeah. Because it it it, it is bringing a change to this industry. Yeah. We are so six months old, but the things we have done within yeah. the six months, it's a lot. Yeah, and maybe you'll talk about those those things uh, that you, you've done as well, or the achievements you managed to record. Yeah. Uh, now, uh, for anybody who's watching, and maybe later on, uh, to have the conversation, they'd like to connect and maybe get to see the packages that you offer. Yeah. If you, maybe you were to highlight them uh, specifically in terms of the nitty gritties, what are they? What? The packages that you offer. Okay, okay. Your so company. we have a lot of packages. Currently, we have Masai Mara packages. We oh. have Dubai packages. Oh, yeah. We have uh, Diani packages, South Coast, North oh. Coast. Mm -hmm. So like we have, for, for now, we, ha we also have another one for February, the oh Valentine's yeah. edition. Mm -hmm. Valentine's is loading. Yeah, mm -hmm. Valentine's is loading. For the ones who, the loved ones, we have one in Arusha. We are going to Arusha also yeah. for the loved ones. Yeah. And then we have, I think we have, there are a lot, but yeah. the few that I've mentioned, I think those are the main ones currently. Yeah. Maybe if you were now to just break it, you know, you just said Naivasha, Dubai. If, so what is in the Naivasha package? If, if, for example, a client is coming to Milestone and they want to go to Naivasha, like you said, if you were to break it down, also in terms of pricing, what is in there for them? Oh, for the Naivasha package? Mm. And so maybe also Dubai, like all of them, the ones you mentioned there. Okay, so like for the Naivasha package, we have like the, uh, we have some hotels in Naivasha that we are working with. Right. So, like we do like a uh, full board, full board basis. So, which means that when you pay, the amount that you pay will cater for your transport, for your food. Yeah. That's breakfast, lunch, supper. Right. So, if you're staying for two days, that will yeah. cater for everything for the two days. Yeah. And then for apart from the food, and then, so if you if you need to do some other activities, like maybe you want to do the spa. Right, you want yeah. to do, maybe you want to go to the national park, yes. maybe you want to visit uh, some places. All those we include in the, in the budget. But you know, we always do, we don't have a specific rate because, mm. you know, different people have different 
everybody has a different way of doing things. Yeah. So you may you may you may get someone who wants to go to the hotels, mm. but stay to, the, to to stay in the hotel the whole day. Right. But there are others who want to go there, and then maybe in the afternoon they want to visit the national park. They yeah. want to go somewhere else. You see. Mm -hmm. So every package is tailor made. Right. Whatever you ask for, mm. if you want if you want transport, yeah. we provide transport. If you don't okay. want transport, we won't provide transport. Right. If you want accommodation, we provide accommodation. Like oh. everything is tailor-made according to your budget. According to the client's budget. Yeah, we can't give you a budget higher than what oh. you are expecting, you see. Right. So we do every budget according to what the client wants. Right. So we don't have a specific, a specific yeah. rate for, for every. For the client, yeah. Yeah. for every package. Yeah, for so every roughly package. for, uh, let's say, um, Dubai. Or rather, let's come back to Kenya. Uh, cost, uh, you've mentioned Diani. Yeah. If somebody will reach out and maybe they want to go to Diani, uh, roughly how much could it cost? So, like for Dubai, uh, for Diani, right. if you're going for maybe like three days, two nights, mm -hmm. and you are going like in a four star hotel, right. that may cost you like around like 28,000. Right. 28,000 roughly, yeah. That's mm -hmm. if you are like a couple. Right. Yeah, that may cost you like twenty-eight thousand. Yeah, that's, that's close a four-star hotel. Close to around two hundred US dollars up to fifty. Yeah, two hundred dollars. Yeah, two hundred dollars. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So Dubai, Dubai, we also we are offering also another package for Dubai. Dubai, right. it goes for around a thousand dollars for Dubai. That's around five days, four nights. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's a good one, the Dubai one. A very <laughs> like good one, yeah. One. <laughs> a very good one. So, yeah. uh, like, our package But does it include flight, uh, visa? Everything. That's uh, everything. Uh, this means you're, you're also in touch with stories, uh, migration services and whatnot. We do everything. We do, like, from, yeah. from visa applications right. to ticket booking. Uh -huh. We do also SGR bookings. Right. We do, like, team buildings. Yeah. We also do activities like... Hiking. Like the other day, like the other day, the last weekend, right. we were in Kila Kilimambogo. Mm. So we did like a, a new year. It's, it's, like, it's more, more like a fitness. Yeah. You see, mm. like the way people start the year with mm. yeah, so get the it. fitness spirit. Or, or the likes of zip lining. Yeah, the likes. No, but that one was hiking. But oh, this one was hiking. Yeah, we hiked okay. uh, Mount Kilimambogo. Like th that one was like 2,800 meters. Yes. That's high. Level. Yeah, that's very high. Mm -hmm. So we have a lot of options that you can you can explore from us. A yeah. lot. Yeah. yeah. But uh, y your industry is is a lucrative industry, yeah. and when you when you, I don't want to get into the statistics is uh, who is what the cu current cabinet secretary is doing about stories uh, wildlife tourism and travel or the rest of the hospitality but uh, that industry provides a lot of opportunities including the in the hospitality as well so for you guys at milestone have you managed maybe to employ a certain number of uh, young men and women and given them opportunity if yes how many and how are you managing that even with the networking aspect so uh, what i can say milestone we are like now six months old right so within the six months that we have been working mm -hmm. we have managed to employ like eight people now, currently. Right. So the eight people are, we have like the social media guys. Right. We have the, we have an office. So mm. we have also the secretary. Uh, where are your offices located? View Park Towers. Uh, View Park Towers. Yeah, part? View Park okay. Towers. Okay. First floor. Mm -hmm. So currently we have managed to employ like eight people, but due to the harsh conditions that are, we have been facing currently, yeah. we could have managed to employ more, but, uh, the conditions currently are, you know, even the park fees. Right. Park fees, they hiked mm. almost double. Yeah. Yeah, so things have been very hard. Yeah. Currently, the industry is, is a bit hard. Yeah. But we are just trying. We are trying. We are trying our best. You're surviving. <laughs> <laughs> the economy, they're saying the economy is very, 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 very tough. Yeah, the economy <laughs> is very, very tough. But we hope, we hope maybe in the future maybe things will be things will be good yeah absolutely things are going to get from better to best yeah yeah right yeah, now yeah. still at your company maybe in terms of now resources that or the facilities that you guys are using to aid uh maybe do you have cars uh, do you have uh what are they say what are they called as like sales attendant you've mentioned you have a digital guy or a social media guy in terms of all those and much more maybe what are they that you're using in terms of also outreach and uh, clientele 
So for the cars, we currently have only three cars. Mm. Uh, Six months, three cars? That's a company that's doing well. <laughs> that's a company so that, that's, that's why I told well. you the company is called Milestones. Mm. Because I told you we are, we are coming to bring the change that yeah. the industry needs. Right. See, so currently we have three cars and uh, uh, among the three cars, those, those are the, the cars that we use to maybe if a, if a client wants to go to the national park, yeah. we use that car. If a client wants to go for maybe like transfers from airport to the hotel, we have cars also like the VIP cars yeah. that we can use when a client comes from, maybe like someone was from abroad, comes mm. to the airport, we pick him from the airport. Yes. Take him to the hotel. Yeah. From the hotel, maybe if he wants to do some errands, we also use that car. Mnampea VIP treatment. VIP treatment. Ata right. wewe. Yeah. Kila mtu tu mwenye nakuja hapo. Nice. Lazima VIP treatment. Awesome. So yeah. we, we, we are trying to, as much as possible, mm -hmm. to make everybody feel like he can afford to travel. Yes. See, so many people say that eh, traveling is expensive, what, what. But mm. we are trying to come up with packages yeah. that everybody will feel comfortable. Even the common monainchi mm. will feel very comfortable to travel. Yeah. See, like now, if we give you an offer, like to go to Dubai, right? Five days, four nights, mm. and we charge you only a thousand dollars. See, and we have catered for your transfers. We have right. catered for your ticket. Mm. We have catered for your accommodation, your mm. food, everything. So mm. you see, that's a very good, a very good, a good offer. Market, yeah. A very good offer. So people should be running to your, yeah, people to, your <laughs> <laughs> to your booking sites. Uh, they they very, should very, be rushing very, very, very fast. fast. They should yeah. be rushing very fast. Yeah, we have very good offers, by the way. Right, incredible. Mm. Now st you mentioned uh, milestone, meaning bringing change. Maybe are there gaps that you guys have identified yeah. in these six months? Six months is a, six months is a good amount of time, in yeah. a, even in a career, even in a job, yeah. to identify some of the hits and the misses in that place. Maybe are there any so far that you've identified yeah. in your in the tours and travels industry? That maybe as milestone you're coming in to feel, and as much as now you're creating opportunity, you've given eight guys, you know, a yeah. job. Yeah. That's employment, yeah. Yeah. which is like one of the biggest uh, vision for each and every maybe company to innovate to create opportunities. True, true. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Are there any so far that you've seen? So the gaps that we have seen so far, uh, there's this thing that nobody, nobody in the tours industry has done. We, had, we, have, we have come up with an idea. We want to, you know, there are people who like doing off-roads. Right. See, so we have come up, we have like two bikes, yeah. off-road bikes, not sport bikes. Okay. The off-road bikes. Mm -hmm. So with those two off-road bikes, that's what we use for, for the, like when you're going to, there are people who like to do the off-roading, like in the mountains. Mm -hmm. The Wazungus and also some Kenyans also. Yeah. We have tried that and we have seen that some people are starting liking the idea. Mm -hmm. Because like for our locals, there was a day we took some people for the off-roading. Right. We take them to the mountains with the bikes. Mm -hmm. So we, s we, we have seen that the people have liked that idea. Right. Yeah, they're starting to, to want to do the, the biking stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, th there's nobody in the industry who does the biking stuff. Oh. And we are coming up with that idea. Okay. They bring the packages also that if you want to do the biking stuff, you will yeah. pay a certain amount. Somebody can drive you to the, if you want yeah. to go to the mountains, you want to go yeah. to the forest. Mm -hmm. You know, the bikes can maneuver anywhere. Right. So if you want to do all that stuff, all the packages will be there. Yeah. That's what we, we have noticed. No, none that's of amazing. The, none of the, tours, none yeah. of the tours company has done that. Okay. And that's what we want to bring currently, yeah. yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. And the trust is going to be big as well. <laughs> All right. Before you tell us maybe uh, roughly what is the lowest amount a client can get from you, maybe if you can tell us uh, in terms of competition so far, uh, but then they say there's healthy competition and there's unhealthy competition. Yeah. Maybe who are your competitors uh, that, and maybe have they enhanced even your vision in terms of now expanding your franchise and, and your business, if you're comfortable to maybe name a few or just roughly code it <laughs> i think we are our own competition you are your own competition is yeah. that self for a business <laughs> i believe a business you you should like you should have sleepless <laughs> nights like bro yeah. my next neighbor should be making me run away no no no, no. Uh -huh. you know if you if you if you look at your neighbor yeah 
you'll have a lot of pressure. Yeah, and that will keep you in check no, for no, no, no. business. Yeah, it, it will keep you in check for business, mm -hmm. but also you have to have competition among yourself. Because okay. the moment you are, you want to, you know, you 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 want to do more mm -hmm. which you cannot do. Okay. And the moment you want to do what you can't do, things will you, you'll start things will start falling apart. Right. Because you'll start seeing like you're not doing what you have to do. Yeah. So you'll start feeling like. You start feeling like your things are going are going to fall down. You, you see, so you, you, I think you need to. You have to set your goals. If you set your goals right, you set you set your vision right. If everything is right within yourself, yeah, I think that's the most important competition. All right, good. Yeah. Uh, next question is, um, how are maybe your comeback? Uh, there, uh, there's one of the guests who are interviewed here. I think she has uh, a mini shop at Sari Center, and she was, it's a popcorn business. Uh, she's yeah. one of the owners, and she was telling me that her clients are return clients. Like, a client came, bought the product, and then told another. So that cycle of clientele is like a community. And for you guys, for these six months that you've been there, maybe have you managed to like establish some sort of community of clients who maybe constantly are coming back, they're giving you shout outs, some of them are checking up on you. Personally, have you? Yeah, so I think the first clients that we had, those are the clients that have made the milestones to become big now, that they, they, the way it is now. Because, mm -hmm. you know, if I give you, if you come to me, I give you a good offer. Mm -hmm. Most definitely, if you hear someone wants to travel, yeah. you'll always refer him to me. See, yeah. mm -hmm. so that's what we have been doing from the first day we started the business. Yeah, we have been giving people very, very good offers. Even okay. in the beginning, we were giving people offers even we were not even we didn't have profits in the beginning. Oh, in short, you guys have managed to at least record some profit. Yeah, uh, as of now, right. the last like two months. Uh -huh. At least you have managed to record some profits because yes. previously we were we were trying to pull clients, right. so we didn't we we were not putting like a profit margin uh, 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 very high. Mm -hmm. Even the profit margin, the first time, yeah. our profit margin was zero. Mm -hmm. What we were doing, we were giving clients like the everything that the client will need. That's what he'll pay. Right. But for our, for us, we were not we were not adding any profit margin for ourselves. Yeah. For the first four four like four three months. Mm. So from there, that's when when people seeing when people were seeing that our offers were very good, so yeah. they started referring us to the other clients. Right. So until now, we have had like a the clientele base has been has has become very very big. Yeah. Yeah. And how is your uh, customer client relationship so far? Uh, the customer client relationship is perfect because all our clients i think we all our clients we have trained them we usually tell uh, uh, all our staff we have trained them we usually mm. tell the staff the client is always right mm. the client is always right because even if the cl even if something happened and the even if something happened mm. the client the client always the client always is right you see? Yeah. There's so those clients who are rowdy. <laughs> uh, personally, I'm sure even in a shop, you've gone, and you've gone to pick some two, three at yeah. a supermarket or a mini shop. And yeah. And just the treatment, you're like, where? Are you having a bad day or something? <laughs> you know, th there's those instances. Organically, they pop up. Yeah, they, uh, they, they have to pop up, but you, you also have to bear with the clients, you know, because you, you are the one who needs the client most. Than the, than the way the clients need you, you see? Yeah. So even if the client is rowdy, you have to take him slow. Yeah. Something happened, even if the client, maybe, you know, sometimes you, 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 can even, you can even book for someone and then the client refuses to pay. And you, you have already contacted the, the hotel, you have contacted your transport team, you have told yeah. them to do this and this and this, and then the client refuses to pay. So yeah. what do you do from there? But they, how did you guys deal with such? <laughs> so you see now that, that's where that's where the the you have to be patient. This industry right. mm -hmm. has a, you have to have a lot of patience. Right. Because the moment the client does that, you have to like for us, if a client books and then he does not pay mm -hmm. on time, uh -huh. we usually talk to the client to tell him, okay, you have not you have not paid, but we have also another offer. A right. cheaper one. 
Maybe the client was not comfortable with the previous offer. Yeah. So we have to give him another offer. Another option. Mm -hmm. We tell him this is another option. Right. You can still pay. Mm. You, you, you can't just talk to a client the way you want. Mm -hmm. You see? Yeah. Customer relation, the customer client relationship is very, very important. Right. Yeah. And I love that because uh, even for any business, actually for f the main reason for business here is you're doing returns and you're interacting with your audience or your target audience yeah. and your customers. And yeah. Yeah. that's why it's important to build the community. Uh, the last guest I interviewed last Tuesday here was, uh, she, 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 she's from, I think she owns a paint, paint something company, paint mixing company. And uh, she pointed out a place where the government is coming in to regulate her industry. And I also maybe will want to shift that to you maybe, uh, I don't know who is your regulator, but in any, in any industry, there's always a regulator, but let's not get into the nitty gritty so far. Mm -hmm. Maybe uh, from your six months of being in the industry, have you observed any favorable conditions that the current, um, I'll say regime, <laughs> or the current government that has put in place that maybe are favorable to your business, or they are also not favorable? Because when you look at it also, the state of politics or the political uh, nature or ecosystem of a country has a massive effect on business operations. And you can date it back to even to uh, 2022 during the previous uh, last year, so last year but once election. Yeah. You saw how businesses were. And also during COVID-19, the pandemic time, uh, you saw how businesses were. And it's, it's again now shifting. Now this is 2024. I don't know from where you sit and what you've observed, what are the favorables and not favorables? So starting with the not favorables, you can say that uh, the government has really hiked pack fees. Mm -hmm. No, like now for, let's say Masai Mara. If you want to go to Masai Mara, uh, park fees has hiked like three times. It was, uh, previously it was 1,000. Okay. So now it's 3,000. Mm -hmm. Because of the hike, if you, previously when you are quoting for a client, yeah. you see th na na that's a difference of 2,000. So if a client has a, like a family of five, mm -hmm. so for the 2,000, it will be a difference of 10,000. Mm -hmm. So if you quote for somebody, you give him like a, something li like, it has risen to more than 10,000. That's on the park fees. Mm -hmm. Okay, come to the petrol. Right. You see, for the last, like a year, the last one year, petrol yeah. has been hiking. Yeah. So when the petrol hikes, also transport, to yeah. Masai Mara will definitely hike. Yeah, but prices dropped last week though. No, five shilling, only yeah. five shilling. It's, it's, still an if, it's still an impact either way. <laughs> still <laughs> an impact. But uh, let's, let's, let's take an example like where you live, mm -hmm. when you're coming to town, yeah. uh, you are paying a hundred shillings, mm -hmm. for example. Mm -hmm. So even, even if the price is reduced by five shillings, mm -hmm. the price of the matatu will still remain a hundred shillings. Mm -hmm. See, so until maybe the price of the fuel will drop by maybe like 20 shillings, right. maybe that's when things will start coming down. Mm. See, yeah. so when the petrol also hikes, transport to Masai Mara will go higher. Yeah. The, the park fees will go higher by 10,000. Mm. Maybe petrol, because of the petrol, maybe also the price will go high by 5,000 maybe. Mm. You see. So if you give a client like a quote more than 15,000 15, mm -hmm. with the previous quote that you had given him maybe a year ago, mm -hmm. some, some clients will kidogo wataka ku, wata ku the prices. Yeah. See, mm -hmm. the way you know the economy, the way it is, ata kitu kipanda ata kama na elfu moja ama elfu mbili, kidogo unasema apana. Manipata. Yeah. So, apokwa prices, government kidogo, they should check on the, on the park fees. Yeah. So, the park fees, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to understand it. Is it entrance fee or? Yeah, is it entrance uh, fee. That's entrance okay. fee. Uh -huh. Even now, if you go to like, you see Kilimambogo. Right. They are about to, they are about to uh, hike the prices. It was previously three, three, 300. Right. But now it's going up to 500. Mm -hmm. You see? That's only park fee. You can get to a gate too. Mm -hmm. Okay. You gate, that's your 500 dimension. Yeah. So from there, that's an story in Right. No, no. Yeah. So, up to prices hiking of the park fees, 
Alafu pia mafuta hizo ni vitu zenye zimefanya industry kidogo imerudi nyuma sana. Yeah. Sana 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 sana. Okay, the favorables. Eh, favorables. Currently sijaona. I've not seen any favorables. Okay. Yeah. I've not seen any favorables, but we as milestones, we are trying to create the favorables mm. by giving people pocket friendly prices. Right. Yeah. That's a great one. Yeah. That's a great one. Yes. Right. So, uh, if if the government was to do something mm. to help the tourism industry, mm. it's only checking on the checking checking at the prices of the park fees and also maybe the fuel prices. Yeah. Because fuel is everything in the country. Fuel is everything. Yeah. Yeah, and for us the tourism industry is all about transport. Yeah. It's moving from hotel to the park, from the park to maybe running errands. Like yeah. everything involves fuel. Yeah. Yeah. So kilio hapo ni fuel na park fees. Short energy and yeah. transport. Yeah. All right, let's shift gears. Uh, maybe to let's say uh, you know, the country in general, you might think you've visited every place in yeah. this country until you go to some places in the interiors and you're like, wow, there's a whole new world here. Maybe if you were to point out to uh, our viewer who's watching, uh, the favorite maybe could be destination or just visiting in a day or just going to have fun or just take a look as well or even study. Thanks to National Geographic, sometimes they give us places. You're like, this place is in Kenya, and I've never been there, and I stay around. Mm. So maybe for you guys at Milestone, have you identified some of the maybe favorite holiday destinations as well as just places to visit that you could point out? You guys check these places out to just market the country. Yeah. yeah. So Kenya, by the way, is very beautiful. Mm -hmm. And even you, whatever you, ex you have explored in Kenya is like maybe 10%. Mm -hmm. Or even less, mm -hmm. because Kenya is big, they, we have a lot of places that are very nice. So right. beginning with, there's a place in there's a place in uh, Kilimambogo. It's called the Getaway Resort. Mm -hmm. That place is very beautiful. Right. It's like a it's like a, a place, a house built between in the middle of wilderness. Yeah, how's the landscape there? And maybe what, you what do you think makes it attractive or so will be a, a <laughs> perfect holiday destination? What makes it attractive is that yeah. it's somewhere above the vegetation. Uh -huh. And the whole place around it is just vegetation. Right. Mm -hmm. if, you go, if you go to that place, I, wa <laughs> I would like you to visit the place. All right. You know, when I, when I say it, you, ca you can't get the picture. Okay. You have to get the picture when you're there. Mm -hmm. But Gateway, Gateway Resort, it's, it's called the Getaway Resort. Okay. You see even the name Getaway. Mm. It's somewhere quiet, very right. quiet. Mm -hmm. you only, what you can only hear is the birds, only the right. birds. Mm -hmm. So if you feel like you have to relax over the weekend, something like that, you go to the Getaway Resort. It's mm. a very nice place. Right. Yeah. So another place we have also the, somewhere called the Nkasiri. Okay. It's in Kajiado. Kajado. Mm -hmm. Kajado County. Right. Mm. How's the landscape there? The, that's a, it's like a fun, a fun area. Right. Is it dry? I'm a it's, semi It's wet. dry. It's also dry. Okay. I think people are, are, are now investing in the dry areas. Mm. Because I think the dry areas, they give like a, the landscape there is flat, very flat. See? So, like in Kasiri, Kasiri is like, the landscape is flat, mm. and then we have like a hill. So Nkasiri is on top of the hill. Mm. See? So Nkasiri, in Kasiri, we have like a lot of activities. Okay. There are small huts where people sleep. The, where people sleep are not the normal houses. Yeah. As, the small huts, triangular mm. huts. Yeah. Wooden. Right. So that's where you sleep. Nice. And for the wooden huts, you're not paying normal prices like for the normal houses. Mm. Because the wooden yeah. huts, if you, they are very, very comfortable. Yeah. Yeah. So we have like the huts, we have, we have a lot of activities. We have high ropes. Right. We have zip lining. Mm. We have swimming. Yeah. yeah and okay. there are a lot of activities you can do there. Mm. Yeah. So, and then we have like, uh, there's another place in Kerugoya County. Right. 
also another place in the forest. It's it's it's, it's called Njinekabi. Okay. I don't know if you have heard of it. No, I've never heard of it. You've never heard of Njinekabi? I'll find out. Yeah, you have to <laughs> you have <laughs> to look at that place. Njinekabi is in the forest. Mm. So uh, in the forest we have like you do like you paramilitary activities. Oh, okay. So you go there, you have to go all the activities that the military do. Right. You climb ropes, yeah. you go along mm -hmm. the they're called I don't know what they are called. But mm -hmm. like everything that like the military does, yeah. you'll do there in the Ngina Right. It's like a it's like a military camp. Yeah. Yeah, literally it's like a military camp. Mm -hmm. You have a waterfall. So right. in the waterfall you have like a you, you can do like activities along the waterfall. Yeah. There is a rope that you you, show, you can be carried with a rope. You are taken from the one side of the waterfall to the other side of the waterfall. Mm. It's very good. It's, it's a very good place. Right. I think you have to. You you'll have to. Maybe you'll give us a list and then because now you, you guys are like now an expert in tours and yeah, travel. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, and, yeah. and I can't wait for you guys to be nominated because that industry is a really big industry. Very big, very big industry. Yeah. Do you think maybe there are places in Kenya that maybe are under visited, and if you guys now coming in in the market, you're going to push the envelope even further. Yeah, you know, like Kenyans, most Kenyans, they have that mentality, like, you know, like, if, if you have noticed, at the end of the year, most people, like, always want to go to the coast. Yeah, because of the sandy beaches. Yeah, because of the <laughs> sandy beaches, but they have, it, it is just exaggerated. Yeah. We have you places. You think so? Ah, it's <laughs> very exaggerated. <laughs> we have places, when you go along, when you're going to, along this road, going to Ethiopia. Right past Isiolo. Mm. We have very beautiful places. People should should try and look into those places. Because right. many people have that mentality like Mombasa with the beaches. No, no, no. no. Yeah. Try and look and into these other places. Yeah. Here, this, uh, this side, going to Ethiopia, yeah. past Isiolo. Right. Ah, they are very good places. We right. also have national parks along that road. But right. many people don't know. Have you tried Nairobi as well? Have you, have you taken clients to Nairobi National Park? Yeah, Nairobi National Park. We do like every weekend. We do, we do, we do visits to Nairobi National Park every weekend yeah. with a Land Cruiser. Mm. Yeah. There's, there's this place. It, it's very common with the Wazungus, uh, also Which Kenyans. Place? Giraffe Mana is it? The Giraffe Mana Center where people go to feed the giraffes. Oh, <laughs> Giraffe Center. Yeah. Yeah, Giraffe Center. Is it also part of the places you guys have taken clients to as well? Yeah, we we have taken, but Giraffe Center uh, mostly we take people like families. Mm -hmm. Because of the children, it it it, it wants it, it needs maybe children, yeah. but for the grown-ups, people like maybe you, we mm -hmm. take the mostly they go to the Nairobi National Park, yeah, and that we do like every weekend, mm -hmm. every Sunday, yeah, we take people to Nairobi National Park. Right. We also we have also done the giraffe center. We have done the these other the the forest, Karura Forest. Mm -hmm. We do all those even in Nairobi. Yeah. But many people, I want people to change the notion of the Mombasa thing. Yeah, actually it's big. That, <laughs> that notion it's for big. the Mombasa thing is very yeah. exaggerated. You can even go to Nakuru, is it? Naivasha. Yeah. Like even Naivasha, Naivasha and Nakuru, we have very good, beautiful uh, places. Uh, yes, exactly. Very, very beautiful places. Yeah. But I think people have just put the mentality that Mombasa is the only yeah. holiday destination. But yeah. no, no, because no. of the Indian Ocean and the weather. <laughs> of course, uh, you can't compare with uh, Mombasa and with uh, Naivasha. Or even also within Nairobi, there's, there's totally different places. And you'd even mentally feel mm -hmm. when you, the moment you leave Nairobi, mm -hmm. you realize you're, you're entering a different yeah, environment true. and it even mentally records. Yeah. True, 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 true. Right. So far, have you, have, you, have you identified that there's, uh, there's something that's missing in Kenyans, especially when it comes to storing our tours and traveling? In Kenyans? Yes. They need to know. They need to know something that you guys have seen. In the tours industry? Yes. Um, Kenyans, Kenyans, Kenyans. Yeah. Or let me simplify it. Maybe an age bracket uh, also. Uh, may, uh, but it will be another question. Anyways, maybe uh, in terms of age bracket, uh, how many Kenyans uh, have you recorded that love to travel? Or is just general? So uh, yeah. currently, the age bracket that loves to travel is between. 16, 17 to up to 40. Right. 
Yeah, up to 40. That's the age bracket that is traveling a lot. Mm -hmm. So from 40 to 40 to 60, most of them are Yeah. Yeah. And also okay. those that are working. Because <laughs> yeah, you, like you can't just pull up and say, I want to come to Milestone and I book a flight to DR. You yeah. must have the money, right? Yeah, we, we, we also have the option for Lipa Mdogo Mdogo. See, let's go to Pesayote. Or you can yeah, do you some can, deposit. You can, you can, you you can always deposit as, yeah. as low as you want. Right. At the end of the come on attack on December holiday, come as I. So you can start from now. Mm. Mia El Fumoja. Right. You and it's deposit. guaranteed. Uh, yeah, it's guaranteed. guaranteed. It's guaranteed. So mm. the moment you finish your payments, we just come on attack on Mombasa Madiani. Right. So you just from as early as now. Right. Eh, because our packages are not even expensive. Right. Yeah, the packages are very cheap, very cheap. So mm. we can the work as I El Fumoja every month. Mm. Ata by the end of the year, you can make a zaidi. You can make a mingi zaidi. Na una mm. una shuto watu sana ukuinge. Yeah. yeah. Maybe uh, to go back to the question I, I'd ask you earlier, maybe in terms of educating Kenyans on cultivating and inculcating the travel culture, what do you think maybe can be done to ensure that you know uskubali tu kuishi kwenye maishi forever? At least get out no place you could be staying at a place and you're seeing it on national geographic and you have no idea that this place exists where i stay so how can we make kenyans love traveling uh, so for us uh, how we can make the kenyans love traveling is first first things kenyans kitu wenye kenya unaangalia ni pesa so the moment we make a prize is due hakuna mtu atakuwa interested to travel okay so sisi tumeingia kwa industry tumesema tunataka kila mtu atravel. Hata 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 mama mzee vijana wadogo mm. tunataka kuweka kila mtu akuwe in the bracket ya anaweza ku travel. Right. Like the other day we had a hike in Kilimambogo mm. and we are only charging 1300. Tukasema hiyo 1300 inasimamia transport, inasimamia kitu utakula, inasimamia photography like everything. For how many days was that? No, it's, it was Kilimambogo hike, a whole ah, day. Oh, that's it was one day. day. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, CC, we are almost charging. Our other competitors want to charge almost double of our amount. Right. Even not double, more than double. Mm. Because others were charging 3,000 to Kilimambogo. Yeah. CC, we said we want everybody. A quick, any mtu mwenye ataka travel, lazima travel. Ata mtu mwemaliza form four, mm. mtu mwenye ako high school, hakuna mtu wezi afford you 1,300. Right. Tukasema lazima kila mtu akue. Mm. We also have wazee. Tulikuwa na wazee tumeenda nao huko Kilimambogo. Mm. Si ati ni vijana peke yake, hadi wazee tumeenda nao Kilimambogo. Right. So what we are trying to do ni tunataka kila mtu wa experience ile traveling. What is all what, what is all about traveling? Mm. Now the moment mtu ana sasa kama wenye tulienda nao hiyo siku ilikuwa their first time wametembea. Wame, wame yeah. Awa tulikuwa nao. Mzee ako 50, 50 something. Mm. Na mimi sijai tembea. Sijai mm. tembea Kenya. Yeah. Amekuwa tu Nairobi all his life. Mm to kampeleka hiyo siku. So from that day akasema every trip that you are having as milestone please inform me. Mniambie. Right. Unpata. So that's what we are trying to do. Tunasema kila mtu lazima tumo involve. Kama wewe ni mzee lazima tutaku hata ukikuja kwa trip zetu uta utakuwa comfortable, very comfortable. Right. Kama wewe ni kijana mdogo au una right. pesa. Mm. Pesa yenye tunaweka ni pesa yenye kila mtu anaweza ku afford. Mm. So what I can say is it true to us travel industry, what they have to do ndio, at least to your notion yeah. ya ku travel ikuwe mo, we have to regulate the prices. Yeah. Because most people wa nataka kuweka prices juu, mm. wapate a lot of profits. Mm. So waki, waki weka prices juu, wana discourage watu from traveling. Yeah. So mm. the moment you have, the moment you put the prices penye kila mtu wana afford, sidhani kama kuna any reason ya mtu kataka ku travel. By the way. Yeah. Mm. That's on pricing, another one. That's that on can, pricing. That can make Kenyans love traveling. And also, Pia, like, maybe like Y254. All right. Uh, you have to put, like, some shows. Mm. You know, many people, many people, what we on Angala TV, Sana. Yeah. So, when you put shows, like, Sasa, like the Nat Geo, whatever. Mm. It was uh, Wild Animals. Right. Like, Sasa, Kama Sisi, Tukienda Mali, Kama Arusha. Pia, right. you give us an, uh, an opportunity to advertise ourselves, Papa. Yeah. So the moment we advertise up, mtu wanaona, eh, watu kumuwa wanaenda wanajienjoy hivi. Mm. So pia mi next time, niko hapo.
yeah. tunaenda na unanipata so Aye. pia advertisement sana zinasaidia sana mm-hmm. the moment we advertise kwa maybe kwa channel yenu right inafikia watu wengi sana mm-hmm. na watu wakiona hivyo so wanakuwa na ile eh. mm-hmm. you know they, they, it creates their awareness yeah that, the media you know. media media is a very big is mm-hmm. a very big contributor to a lot of things mm-hmm. ndio maana unasikia sometimes hata ndio maana mko na mna regulate pia nyisa zingine mm-hmm. there are some things you can't do on air Mm. Ama there are some news that you can't put on air. Okay. And yeah. because it reaches a lot of people. Yeah. So the moment mnaika tu hapa things like the travel industry vitu kama hizo those yeah. things will encourage a lot of people. What will yeah. travel sana. Yeah. Yeah. And also the fitness part. Mm-hmm. A lot of people wanataka ku travel via your fitness pia. Like yeah. sasa kama tumeenda hiking we did like 2800 kilometers. Right. Watu walikuwa wanataka hiyo juu, walikuwa wanataka kuban. The moment unafanya 2800 kilometers walking. Uh-huh. That's a lot of calories you've burned. Mm. So watu wengi pia wana wanaangalia pia on the fitness aspect pia. Right. Yeah. So any yani, vitu kama hizo tu, yani those are the things that I think we can do to at least encourage people who uh, are travel. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, also when you look at communities in terms of interaction, uh, you realize when we go to Mombasa we definitely utakujua kesema oh in Yanza nene nene you've learned that uh, Swahili cut and also the Swahili food and everything that people at the coast do it's just amazing like there's a wow factor to it sometimes so a lot of people that are not curious about just you know knowing what's happening in Kadzeado yes you stay in Karen but can you try and know what's happening in you know in Bungoma mm-hmm. yes you stay in Mombasa can you travel to Nakuru and see what's happening in Naivasha and the region so i think that curiosity also yeah, will, curiosity uh, also, yeah. will, will help to just like get, get lose the old ideas you have you know there's people who believe they can't go to other places because they'll be attacked they have fear oh, i'll go due to rift valley i will fall yeah, like yeah, there's yeah. some limiting factors mental as well yeah. so i wish I, I wish people would also you know get the the fact that you know going to a different place will not change what you believe Yeah, yeah, true. true Belief true. systems can really limit people. Yeah, true, 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 true. Yeah. Okay. Now, um in la, la, this is this is on local travel. Now, maybe if we can talk about an international travel a little bit. Maybe other things that you guys have seen and also that you guys are working on to expand your uh franchise that at some point you might go international. Do you have that uh, vision on board already? So, we are al- al- just looking already, forward to We already international. Uh-huh. We are already international. Okay. But international in the aspect of east africa yeah still international that's mm. international mm. Yeah. still international so currently we are east africa we are doing very great mm. uh, the the i think the most the farthest point we have done is dubai okay yeah farthest point we've done is dubai but we are trying to you know we are six months old yeah so i think we are doing very we are doing very great Actually I'd say for a new company six months you guys have achieved a lot because <laughs> when you look at even startups that have spent six six months in the market yeah. they're still in their baby step exactly. uh, season exactly. you're trying to figure out you know getting to know your clientele yeah. you know also pulling together resources but yeah, sure. it seems like you guys are really powered up I have a very a very good team mm-hmm. a very good team the the team that you're working with I think is the one that pushes you to do good things. Mm-hmm. So currently East Africa we've done like Rwanda, we've done Uganda, Tanzania. Oh, managed to go to Rwanda as well. Yeah, we've gone to Rwanda. We've uh, taken, taken even clients, clients to there. Rwanda. Right. Via flight or uh, No, we, they they were going via bus. Transit bus. Okay. Yeah, they went via transit bus. Mm-hmm. We also took clients to Tanzania. Okay. That was in we went to Moshi, then from Moshi to Arusha. Yeah. Then from Arusha to back to Kenya. Yes. That was in New Year. Uh, towards the beginning of 2020. Yeah, towards the be- beginning of 2024. Mm. So we are actually on week two, week two or three. <laughs> yeah, we are <laughs> in week two or three. Yeah. Mm. So I think we. So in the next like one year or so, mm. I think we'll have we will have done we are we will have toured the continent a lot. Yeah. The president's move to have East Africa visa free country. And uh, in fact it's all African countries now has it in any some sort of way uh, given a facelift to your experience on the market 
Uh, currently, the visa free for the, the first time, it was a bit a tussle kidogo. Julu kuna pata mtu wana airport. There was a time, the first time the president, iyo taremoja iyo. Alisema taremoja ndiyo itaanza kuwaka. Yeah. So the first time taremoja. And then it affected pata, international travel as well. Yeah, it affected because a lot. Because they were to wait for the they were to, they electronic were coming. Uh, authorization. Others even went back. Yeah. Others even went back, imagine. So right. they were coming to the airport. In Afrika Mahali, things were not working. Yes. Then they had to they had to even go back. Yeah. But currently things now on size ko sawa. So the government has worked on that. Mm. So now for the African countries, if mm. you are from Africa, anywhere from Africa, you can come to Kenya visa free. Yeah. yeah. Do you think that's going to help your industry? Yeah, it's going to help our industry so much. Mm. So much. Because in what ways? <laughs> because now even someone from South Africa who wants to come to Kenya. Mm. Not even looking for a visa is very stressful. Yeah. Visa is very stressful. Hata yeah. sayo kijaribu kutafuta visa, unataka kuenda mahali. Ukutafuta mm. visa, sayo unaweza take almost even two weeks, three weeks looking for the visa. So mm. someone from South Africa, hata akiamua nataka kuja holiday Kenya, hata mm. mke leo kesho aseme nataka kuja holiday Kenya, hata mm. kuja. Wanipata? Mm. Yeah. So hata kuwa na ile ati, oh, mambo ya kutafuta visa ni mimi. Yani hasoli yaki itakuwa kutafuta, nanya hata nipeleka around Kenya. Kutafuta mm. the tour company. Wanipata, yeah. nanya hata mzungusha around Kenya. But hiyo right. hasoli ya visa hata kuwa na ayo. Na the mm. moment hana hasoli ya visa, ndiyo, mm. the moment hata, itakuwa any easier for him to decide to come. Wanipata? Yeah. Na sasa the moment wana kuja, the moment PSCC tuna benefit from them. Yu mm. tunapata customers. Mm. Yeah, exactly. So, the visa free, yo, you know, sana, 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 sana. All right. Do you, th do you think we are good at importing services or exporting now in your industry? Because I'll, I'll, I'll also like to see, you know, South Africans come to Kenya to view our giraffe. But this South Africa is one of the most uh, marketed uh, uh, to African tourism destination yeah. country. Yeah. South Africa, the way they do their TV, radio adverts, and even if you look at a roundup of their media stations, the way they have their documentaries, they talk about their... Uh, the, the wildlife and their travel industry loudly as compared to maybe other countries. Yeah. And that's why we have a lot of Wazungus going there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So do you think for us here in Kenya, we are good at exporting travel or importing travel? A lot of people would prefer to go outside Kenya or come into Kenya. So the problem with Kenyans is that Kenya is a You think so? Yeah. Kenya, I know. Kenya is a You know, for a Kenyan, mm -hmm. I prefer to go Tanzania. I'm at a prefer to go South Africa. I don't know if you want to go which is your best holiday destination. You can go Italy. No, I wouldn't Zanzibar. tell it's Italy. <laughs> no, <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I'll tell it's Italy, but it's all right. Yeah. yeah. So the point I'm trying to give you is that Kenyans, many Kenyans, who can go to Dubai. I would want to go to Dubai. I would want to go to Santorini. Yeah, Santorini, <laughs> Italy. Bahamas. Bahamas, yeah. Mm -hmm. So Kenyans, what they have in Kenya. Right. We have a lot in Kenya. Like in Kenyans, mm -hmm. they prefer to go out. Yeah. What makes them though? Because yeah, I can only imagine if you hate your country so and want to go to no, another. They are not hating, yeah. but they don't know what we have. Right. So that awareness part, like that awareness part is very yeah. important. Okay. Many Kenyans don't know what we have in Kenya. Hata mm. ni kikwambia kuna vitu ujui ziko Kenya. Places, uh, a lot of places you don't know. That one I agree because uh, to, to well, there's a time, there's a time, there's this place in Kakamega. I think they had, is it, there's a place called Liranda. They had something called a crying stone. Liranda. And it also, yeah, it dates back to stories uh, during the colonial time. Yeah. I didn't even know that place was in Kakamega. Exactly. Because nobody has ever talked about it or even marketed it. Exactly. No matter what you Kakambia, you only know less than 10% of Kenya. Mm. Less than 10. I don't know, the only 5% unajua. I'm a less yeah. than other. Because mm -hmm. Kenya wajui what we have. They don't know the treasure that we have in Kenya. A right. lot. Hata we mwenye, uneza kuwa metembe, umeenda maka Dubai. Lakini ujai fika hata Masaimara. Yeah. Ume travel easy countries. Ume travel easy countries zingine. Lakini ujai ingi hata Masaimara. Ujai ingi hata Nairobi National Park. Ujai ingi ya. Because maybe somebody would have seen. Nairobi National Park. Yeah, I've been even to Giraffe. Okay, yeah. At least we have uko sawa. Yeah. But kuna mtu ajawai ingia Nairobi National Park. Mm. Kabisa, lakini, anasema, mi nataka kuenda Zanzibar. Nataka kuenda Tanzania. Nataka kuenda hapi. Lakini hata Kenya aja explore hata, hata kidogo. Yeah. Na Kenya kuna. Kwa ni wazungu, wazungu wanatoka majuu, wanakuja mpaka Kenya, wanakuja kutafuta nini. 
Mm. I want to do what, what we have here in Kenya. They know. Yeah. Uh, Kenya, Kenya is very beautiful. Kenya, we have a lot of things. Right, absolutely. Yeah. So I think uh, the awareness part. Yeah. We have to look into the awareness part. Okay, and I think your uh, people like you now in the markets will be doing that. Oh, we are us. coming. We are coming. Yeah. We are. We will work on that. Yeah. My second last question before we exit. Maybe what do you think are the selling points for Kenya in terms of travel, both local, domestic, and now international travel? The selling points. Selling points. Mm. Definitely, Kenya. Selling point for Kenya is wildlife. Mm -hmm. Wildlife plays a very big part in the tourism part. Yes. Mm -hmm. Also, apart from the wildlife, we also have the landscape. Right. Mm -hmm. See, like the Ukienda Pale Ile viewpoint. When you know, when you you do always your mini. That's where many people stop on Angalia and Ile viewpoint. So, wildlife, yo, the mm. landscape of Kenya, what we have in Kenya, yani, the culture. Mm. Those are the key points that is in a, is in a, is in a boost our tourism industry. What about the world best migration? <laughs> That's the wildlife. That's that, that's the uh, even the that's the Masaimara now. The wildebeest migration, yeah. Even mm -hmm. the wildebeest migration. Kwa mm -hmm. wildebeest migration, time ya wildebeest, kuna mm -hmm. na like tourists wana kwanga like more than four times like, like the, the, than the normal time. Mm -hmm. So ina manisha yo wildebeest migration plays a very big part in the tourism industry. All right. Also the coast. All right. Coast also plays a very big big part in the tourism sector. Right. You cost, kama wa Kenya wanaenda cost, inamanisha mm. cost, mm. ata wazungu wenye. There's something special. Something special cost. with the cost, yeah. Mm. Yoyo maji. Yeah. Yoyo pia ni... The weather The itself. weather, the, yeah. the ocean. Mm. All that is something in its own. Right. Yeah. Which is an incredible thing because, uh, like you said, you just, you, you, wherever you stay is where you stay, but just try to find out what's happening in the next... That's very, that's very important. community. So, like, people like, I'm insisting on the, on your channel. Okay. I think you have to put a segment like, the segment, like, where you can promote the tourism industry. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you can put a segment like where you show, like, what we have in Kenya. Like a, a different show, like a show on its own. Mm -hmm. You show, like, maybe you have, like, maybe one person who travels around the country. The person we have that. We have that. It's just that you have to pay for it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You have that uh, already. That's no problem. We can do that. We oh. can do that. No problem. All right. But lastly, uh, we are exiting. Uh, what is the peak season in uh, for the six months you've been in? What, have you identified peak season for travel? Yeah. Peak season is the uh, wildebeest migration, the December holidays, mm -hmm. and also and also. Uh, Valentine's. Mm -hmm. uh, those are the major peak seasons, by the way. Valentine's, okay. wildebeest migration, and December holidays. Okay. Good. But the industry throughout mm -hmm. the year, it's 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 not bad. It's mm -hmm. very like, it's like uh, for now at the moment. Uh, how is the how is the space? Uh, it's a lot of school fees. Mm -hmm. So Kidogo now things have have zimetulia Kidogo. Right. Yeah. But they are picking on February. Must yeah, have from, Valentine's. from January, Kisha. Yeah. Uh, from January, maybe pressure, end of January. Pressure in a subside. Pressure in a subside, what what answers I could travel. All right. Yeah. And last question, though, I don't want to say my last one. Uh, for anyone who is watching, maybe, what is the tiniest of packages that they could get? Either the cheapest mm -hmm. and maybe the biggest as well. Smallest, tiniest, and the biggest of the packages you offer to them. And then you'll tell them where they can find you. A smallest package. We have one in Na Na Naivasha mm -hmm. for two d uh, for two days, three nights. Mm -hmm. that, that goes for how much? That one goes for fourteen thousand. And we have another one in the highest now, the highest package. Mm -hmm. The highest package, I think, the for the highest for now is Dubai. Right. Yeah, Dubai. That one is a thousand dollars. Right. Yeah. Okay. So, my partner, so tell if maybe somebody wants to travel with you this December or next month, we'll say my it's Valentine's. Yeah. How can they book? Uh, where can they find you? Do you have a number, website? Yeah. You can talk to them here. And also, why 
what is exactly the advantage of them experiencing travel with you? You can share it with them shortly here. Oh no. Yes, now, because we are leaving. We are okay. exiting the show. We are okay, done. Okay. <laughs> so I think they can find us uh, on our social media pages, Milestones, Instagram, Milestones underscore tours underscore. And also we have our contacts. Uh, the business number for the business number is 0714-049-806. Uh, I think uh, they, are, they, they, they need to book with us because we provide the best quality services and also we give, we give our all in, giving our, in providing our services. Yeah. So, so thank you so much, Philip Hamad. So. He's the CEO of Milestone Tours and Travel. Speaking to us about travel entrepreneurship, and I perfectly understand that you guys loved this conversation. And you know, if you want to travel from now till Feb, or literally the end of the year 2024, you know who to talk to right here. And that marks the end of uh, this session right here. As always, the hashtag is in the morning at Y244 channel at Brian Sakwano one and that's where you can find me personally. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you next time right here on Raw in the Morning.